the very best golfers leave a legacy by inspiring a generation or changing the way the game is played. Our resident coach and analyst Simon Holmes has been looking back at the careers of some of the sport's greatest pioneers and trailblazers. Today it's the turn of the most successful southpaw in the history of the game, lefty himself, Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson learnt his golf by copying his dad. Now his dad was right-handed and he used to face his dad and he just everything as a mirror. So he ended up as even though he's a right-handed guy, swinging left-handed. So, you know, probably the most famous left-hander ever. And from, you know, that copying of his dad is where he really learnt all of his skills. And he certainly learnt every single shot in the game and some that we haven't seen. Well, anyway, Phil Mickelson would take those skills and be a superstar junior golfer. He would end up at the University of Arizona. And in his junior year, he would win the Tucson Open, a PGA Tour event. So an unbelievable uh, record that would lead him to turn professional in 1992. It was an incredibly successful time for him. You know, he obviously had the victory from his junior year, which allowed him to play full PGA Tour status. So 1992, he wins in his first year as a professional golfer, two PGA Tour events, and he would go on the next four years to pick up even more victories. But the one thing that was missing was this major victory. And so many times he was the bridesmaid, you know, the nearly man. This was all addressed finally in his golden year 2004. Coming up 18, he needs to make this sort of 15, 18 footer to beat Ernie Els and rolls it dead in the center for his first green jacket to take that monkey off his back. And he would go on to really have three more fantastic chances. At the US Open, he had a great chance and didn't manage to close it out. Again, at the Open Championship and at the US PGA. So this sort of legacy of these near misses would keep going. And he finally decides to change uh, coaches from Rick Smith over to Butch Harmon. Starting sort of 2007, 2008 was the first time Phil actually goes head to head with Tiger and beats him. One time at the Deutsche Bank, the next time at the Tour Championships. So it would have been Butch behind the scenes, knowing Tiger really well, now coaching Phil, telling Phil, hey, listen, come on, I know you can beat him. So Phil completely rededicates himself to the game to the start of that 2008 season. More fitness, more physical training, getting stronger, dropping some weight, trying to really get into the condition that he would need to go up against Tiger Woods. This would lead us to the 2010 Masters Championship and the return of Tiger Woods from his hiatus. And on the weekend, Phil would go up against uh, Lee Westwood and closing with a 32 on the back nine, four fantastic birdies, back nine drama, as we would see. And Phil would finally be the beneficiary of a fantastic four days. And especially with his mum and his wife having been poorly that year, it was a great victory for the Mickelson family. That would bring us to the 2013 Open Championship, probably of all the tournaments with Phil's driving and his high ball flight, the tournament he would least expect to do well in. And certainly his performances were well below the expectations that we would have for him. However, on that week, with four birdies to close out, he would defeat Henrik Stenson and pick up, for me, his most impressive victory, the victory that was the hardest for him to achieve, the victory where he needed to adapt his game and his skills the most to those Lynx conditions. And so what I think is interesting, Phil, at this period of his life, he is still fighting hard to improve. And in 2016, we saw greatness from Phil. The show that he gave us with Henrik Stenson at the Open Championship. He shoots 65 in the last round and loses to Henrik Stenson's 63. Just a magical performance from both of them. Phil Mickelson finishing miles ahead of third place. Again, at the Ryder Cup against Garcia, and just an incredible shootout. So for Phil, even though he's not had a victory since that Open Championship, he's recreated himself time and time again. So what I love about Phil Mickelson is his love of the game. What a fantastic ambassador he is for golf. And are we going to see from Phil Mickelson, finally, that US Open trophy in 2017?